the nice thing is, is um, I structure my belts using a lot of different types of pouches. So I actually use, um, I'll show you, I'll show you why. So I actually use um, different type of pistol taco. So I use the belt tacos with the basically one wrap on the back. So a little piece of hook Velcro on the other side. So basically when I put these around my belt, it still retains the hook aspect of the inside or the outer belt. So when it clips onto the inner belt, it's not losing any sacrifice in terms of rigidity. And it does really good. It doesn't flop around. And the nice thing is if I decide I don't want to use if I decide one day, okay, I'm going to be, I need more rifle mags. I can just take this off, put another rifle mag one on there because it's set up the exact same way. Um, so I can just take another one of these, oh, wow. move it right along. And then the inner belt goes on and it's not going anywhere. The nice thing about the Velcro being on there too, because it's Velcroing to your inner belt, it keeps it from sliding side to side. Correct. One of the issues that I think a lot of you guys will find if you decide to go with belt mounted um, pouches as opposed to PALS mounted or, you know, whatever system uh, is that they can slide side to side. And if you're, you know, a stickler for them being in the same place every time, you do have to come up with a creative way to keep them from sliding around. And uh, George's adaptation to do that is a really useful way um, to keep your pouches in place while still having the versatility of changing those pouches out. Yeah, so what other pouches um, do you generally rock? Um, so it, it really is right now, I would say very similar to yours, um, in terms of, oh, well, I just want to talk about something really quick and then I'll talk about specific pouches. So there's another belt on the market that is the same setup as this one, which is, um, Eagle Industries came out with it and they basically took the war belt concept, but they put the loop side Velcro on the outer belt and the hook side Velcro on the inner belt. I tried this. I did not like it. Um, I thought I would. I really did. I really thought I would, but it did not have the benefits that I thought it would have, believe it or not. I remember and they gave some sort of reasoning for why they- Their, their reasoning it. was that you could wear like a wetsuit or something like that and the hook Velcro on the outside wouldn't affect it or something. Oh, of course. But yeah. I just, it, it had two advantages. One was that you could use the loop or you could use the um, belt loop style tacos and just wrap them in. You don't have to do any modification. Because, I mean, that was nice, but the, it wasn't really worth it in the long run. But George, what about was, all those times that you and I play airsoft in wetsuits? <laughs> or even, I mean, like, unless you're a SEAL like, or a Marine, maybe. <laughs> like, I don't even yeah. really know that many people who, who are doing real first responder and real work who uh, would also need to use a wetsuit. Right. Um, right. So pouches, I use two different types of pistol pouches either the tacos, whether belt mounted or this is a molly mounted one. Um, and the other one I use or more recently is the G code scorpions or soft shells. Um, they're very nice cause they, they reach, you know, they have a good amount of rigidity there. Um, but they have their drawbacks. I think they're, I think they're nice. I think tacos are nice. I think it just all comes down to personal preference. I would probably, you know, even the S pack stuff is good. Um, all of them have their advantages and disadvantages. I'm not really sure what I use two different types of magazines. So with pistols, which is, I don't use, I don't always use double stack, um, for both real guns and for, you know, I have an IC 11. So for airsoft and for real guns. So if I'm using an S tac, it does not work very well for a mm. setup with a single mag. Um, mm -hmm. it works okay, but it, I still prefer, um, tacos for that something so that I, has the ability to change size a little bit easier yeah. that's the, that is the drawback of using a kydex insert mag pouch is you're kind of yeah. limited to the designed width of that magazine so i really do prefer the you know the the tacos um versus the the soft shell scorpions um just after use i prefer these the magazine index is a lot easier into them it slides a lot easier into them. And I've seen some people modify, they just take a Dremel and a, they take a Dremel and kind of round this out. Yeah, Richard made his his a lot more pleasant. I've got tired yeah. of scratching my arms on them. That's, yeah. that's such a pansy thing to be upset about on a magpatch. But hey, it's all about comfort, right? 
Yeah. So these are what I use pretty much now is just tacos for both rifle and pistol. I tried the G code stuff. It's nice. It's great. It's just the mounting options are a lot harder as Matt alluded to, mm -hmm. to worry about you. You're basically spending a lot of money on injection molded stuff to set up your belt. So it makes it very expensive to do. Um, mm -hmm. but they are nice. They are very nice. They do come in handy. The next thing I have a big fan of is these. Um, I don't know if we sell these on our website. Uh, these are made by tactical Taylor. These are the perfect size pouches to holding an only gay 67 or, uh, the full, the, the big full, boys. Yeah. The, the big 18 X. Yeah. 18 X. These fit the 18 X perfectly. Um, and they're pretty cheap. They're from the fight line, fight light line. I don't know if we carry them. But um, they're great little pouches for that. That's why I, I don't. This belt is not my greatest example, um, but it's, it's they're good pouches. And then the last thing is also a tactical tailor fight light mounted utility pouch. Now I don't always have medical stuff in these um, for like an AMS game. I'll keep the two bandages in this for a range thing. I'll keep what I want in here. Mm -hmm. um, same with. It just depends on, I don't have, it's not detachable. It's not one of those fancy med pouts. Med right. Packs. Um, one thing to keep in mind in terms of having an eye pack that's mounted this way, you can always take off your belt in an emergency. So don't have it not be being detachable as a drawback of not storing medical supplies in a place you can't have access to it right away. Because you can take off your belt pretty right. quickly these days. Someone so, could also just roll your ass over. That too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm referring to if you're applying aid to somebody else, oh, you yeah, to, get like, to, your own, so to your own stuff. Roll over, I got you. I don't know. I mean, like it, it. You know, you could go and talk about medical supply stuff for for hours and hours. And hours. Which which George and I do want to do. In fact, we might uh, try and get some special guests. Uh, you know, in a special episode in the future to try to talk about uh, medical supplies and whether they really are useful in airsoft. Uh, now that we've gone over, I'm sorry. I was just going to transition to yes, talk holster. about holsters. So um, I have a few different types. Um, I have a G-code um, one here that is actually still mounted to an RTI system, which is a pretty good system. It works. Um, this G-code holster, um, the only reason it still uses this RTI mount was actually I modified a lot of my older G-code stuff to use the Safari Land mounts. This one I can't get to to work because it has the uh retention honestly so just, i love g codes uh level two thumb break their thumb more, break is is nice i like it more than the safari land even though if it gets dirt in it it's not reliable but i like that it springs out of the way and it's certainly better than the blade tech that oh, having yeah. to oh god so this right here is like a, this is a G-code to standard, I think the OSH holster. And then all I did was just modify the back to use a Safari Land QLS. Cause I, I really like the QLS because it it's, doesn't flop as much. Um, they're about the same price as the RTI, but because the back of the holster has this wide platform, the holster itself just doesn't give me as many issues. Mm. Um, I, maybe that's the reason, maybe the RTI hardware is just not set up the way I want it to. I, I don't know really the reasoning. I just found that these give me less of an issue than the RTI. So basically I converted everything that I had that was RTI into, into those. Um, and then obviously switched to just basically a lot of Safari land holsters, you know, lots of, uh, lots of credit card bills. And for those that are curious, both the um, Safari Land QLS and the G-Code um, RTI hanger system aren't just um, used for belts. You can get QLS mounts and RTI hangers uh, that'll work for, for PALs and Molly webbing if you wanted to put them up on your vest um, or hard mounts if you wanted to uh, clip a pouch into a hard case or into a vehicle. Uh, they've got a ton of different mounting options um, depending on you know your use case whatever you want to mount whatever you want to mount to whatever you want to mount um one last thing and, and this is something i like about war belts especially the newer g code style that doesn't have the webbing on the side um is the ability to just use old style pancake style holsters um these 
like this holster specifically is oh, this holster. This holster specifically was, you know, because I had a 1911 that was hard to find a holster with a light for it um, just because of the rail that it uses. So the nice thing is, is having this is probably the best holster I have for that pistol. Mm -hmm. I do have another hole. I do have a Safari land that fits it. This one here does, but it doesn't retain it as well as this in terms of just being able like these do not when they're on a war belt they do not move right which is really nice and they're also do, more affordable they are more affordable exactly um and the they do a very good job of not moving around very much they hug to your body really closely that does have its drawbacks though and also you know you have to swap it in and out you have to undo the buckle slide it in redo the buckle but you know, it does work. It is a nice feature to be able to be able to do that. Well, nice. Thanks for showing up. Damn, you have so many holsters. I think I have like three tops. Well, I have a bag of this. I mean, like the thing is, is for me, I have probably two holsters for each gun almost because I tried holsters over the years. I don't throw yeah. like this is this is a Glock thirty four holster, and I think this one's a or. One of these other Safari Land ones is a Glock 34 holster with a light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so that's the other that's the other thing, right? Is anybody who's run a sidearm, you have to make a choice. Am I permanently going to run if I'm doing a hard shell holster? Am I permanently going to run a light on my pistol because that means that I need to get a holster for my pistol with a light on it. And if I take that that light off, all of a sudden my retention is gone from my hard shell holster because 99% of the time hard shell holsters use the light as the placement for their retention because it's the widest part of the pistol now. So um, when you're choosing a pistol for your belt or if you're mounting it to your vest, be aware of you know how you're going to be running your pistol the most often um, and then choose the holster based on that or avoid all those problems and get a soft shell holster and don't ever worry about scraping up your pistol ever again. We <laughs> We got another comment here from Jax O'Neill, SG1. <clears throat> he said, I have two belts, a modern shooter's belt that I use in combination with my plate carrier or chest rig and an old school war belt that I use as a standalone. The shooter's belt is set up for more high speed work while the war belt is really traditional. And I think what he means by traditional is that load bearing aspect we talked about earlier. Also, if I expect rain, I'll strap my gear onto the belt with belt straps. Due to its weight, I carry it with a yoke. Uh, and a yoke is an H harness, I'm yeah. guessing. Yes. I don't know. That's a new term for me. That's I'm learning things now. I don't know what a yoke is. <laughs> well, uh, a yoke is I I think is the straps that it's go the strap, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, something like that. So, so people can criticize me if I'm wrong. And, and you know, I think that his comment perfectly illustrates um, that it depending on your situation, it really is worthwhile having multiple setups. I know George and I talk a lot about modularity and getting a vest that can do kind of everything based on your situation, the, the front placard that can do that, the scalable gear so you can wear a belt or not wear a belt and you can play in different environments. But sometimes it's it's nice having a, a purpose-built piece of equipment. So if you're playing indoor, you know, having a, a chest rig to play indoor, if you, if you or if you're, you know, doing a, a reenactment piece, having an Alice belt with like all of the, the old school 70, 70s and 80s gear, because that's the look you're going for. Um, but I guess really the sky's the limit with how you can set up your gear. I mean, the thing is, is that everybody has their own different version of what they want Airsoft to be for them. Some people want to use it as like, they want to be super high speed operator. They want to let, let it like that. Some people want a more cosplay style. Some people want something that is more reenactment style. Like everybody has their own flavors of what they want to do. I Me mean, personally, I just use what I would use for, for range training and stuff like that. So it's right. a dual purpose for me. Um, and also having the ability to basically kind of have an endless closet for me, at least makes it a lot more advantageous for, for different types of loadouts. What I do suggest, and this is what I tell a lot of people who are talking about when they want to get into expensive um, loadouts and stuff like that is stick to one color and have that color be able to be used cross platform. And uh, I would either tell them it's, there's two colors that I would look at either Cody Brown, probably the first choice, and then Ranger Green probably. Ranger second. Green. Those those two colors can basically match up with anything. 
that yeah. you could possibly want. I'd say Coyote Brown probably is the is the best at that, mm -hmm. um, and then Ranger Green would probably be the second. And so if you structure your loadout around one color, you save a lot of costs. You know, versus trying to build three or four loadouts, it gets pricey. Some people enjoy it. Matt enjoys it. <laughs> I enjoy it. But some people don't, and they, you know, and those people who don't are like, oh, I don't want to. I want to have a nice loadout, but I want to spend a lot of money. Then right. here you go. Just focus on nothing but getting Coyote Brown or Ranger Green equipment, and it'll be able to run it with everything: multicam, woodland, right. you know, multicam right. black. All of it will make sense. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Every time I see someone with, and this is going to sound terrible, but every, every time I see somebody with like a, a full, you know kit of like multicam vest and belt i you know i find myself thinking like man you you really can only wear that with multicam or you know i guess solid color um bdus well maybe that's not the case but uh, and you uh, can I'm wear being judgmental but you're, you're being judgmental the same way that i'd be judgmental about it but like you could argue that hey if i'm wearing green i could wear multicam tropic BDUs and a right. multi-cam rig and it wouldn't look that out of place mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they're right they are right um I personally you know I'm working on a multi-cam specific loadout right now but okay. um you know I probably won't you to be realistic with you I probably won't use it very much like I right. can very I I I, I built my multi-cam black rig probably just for the range and then my other two rigs are just kind of whatever whenever I feel like it kind of deal so and that's, it's yeah. And that's what I was getting to. Like, I've, now I'm building this multicam black thing, and every time I'm I, I'm looking at it and trying to decide, well, what what pouch do I want to put on it next, or you know, what thing am I saving up for? At the same time, in the back of my head, I'm going, "You're spending four, five, six hundred dollars on a belt that you'll rarely well wear. Like, there are very few occasions when I'm going to wear black loadout." Well, so. Um... That's that's for your to decide. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I have different advantages um, or disadvantages too. Uh, I'd say they actually cost more the same in the long run, probably. To be honest with you, you know, in terms of my hobbies and, and uh, stuff like that. But anyway, um, really quick, we're going to go on to David Ball's question at the end. Uh, he says, "I run everything on a belt and a harness." Um, he uses a drop leg holster. Drop leg holsters is not something we went over with, so maybe we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, he uses a three mag pistol pouch, five double M4 mag pouches, utility pouch, dump pouch, and a hydro pack on the harness itself. So it sits on his back. And then he, uh, but he can run every gun he has except for his SIG 24 sniper mags. Um, oh, he can run every gun he has, sorry. So he can basically run a sniper rifle, his pistol mags, his M4 mags, everything on that one. I think drop legs are interesting. I don't, mm -hmm. I, I used a drop leg when I first started airsoft and I will never ever use one ever again. Um, it, it's, and it learned very quickly of why, um, because it's on your leg. If you play in areas with dirt, which California has a lot of dry desert places to play airsoft, even at SC village, it is dirt and you get dirt in your pistol a lot on your, on your drop leg, even though it's only, a foot lower than your hip, mm -hmm. you will find because it's on your actual leg that you will get a lot more dirt on your pistol. That's right. That's number one is why. It, and also it's heavy on your leg. Like it's heavy. Yeah. Um, I know you use a mid ride, um, which is kind of like that hybrid. I do lowering, you know, and you use a strap around your leg to keep it stable, Makes which is sense. basically just a high drop leg. So I ran a drop leg for a number of years. And the reason I stopped running one is not so much the dirt, but being down on my leg, when I take off running, the drop leg holster is shifting around my leg and flopping around as I'm running. And it made it really uncomfortable to, to do any work quickly. And because it lowers your draw stroke down your leg, it makes it very difficult to draw while sitting. Um, or if you're, you know, if you're in tight quarters, then it does to draw from your waist. So I moved up to a mid ride because I didn't want it to flop around so much and bringing it up closer to your waist means it's going to be shifting around less when you're running uh, and makes it easier to draw even when sitting. Granted, a mid ride is not easy to draw while sitting. It's just easier. Yeah. So I haven't decided. So I actually I have a mid ride uh, mount I bought, and I have a standard safari land. I'm going to try them both out at the range one day and really kind of see what I like better. 
I really need to experiment with the mid ride um, and see if it's something I want to give a chance in the future. I have undecided right now. Um, I do not like drop legs. I like pistols on my hip. Um, and uh, one last thing I kind of wanted to talk about a little bit in terms of using belts. Um, if you're the type of airsofter, and there are people out there who kind of forget this sometimes, if you're the type of airsofter who maybe maybe you care about this, maybe you don't. Uh, if you're this type of airsofter, there are some that leave the game early a lot. Um, they get tired, they don't want to play anymore, whatever, and that's fine. It's, it, it doesn't matter. That's your decision. It's your it's your money. It's your um, your experience. If you're finding to yourself though that you are getting tired quickly and are unable to play the whole game that you want to play at because you're tired, my advice would be to just run a pants belt and to run a chest rig. Mm. Putting the weight off of your hips and putting the rig onto your chest in a, you know no you know no plates nothing just a simple rig that is lightweight, you will end up finding yourself playing the entire day with no issue. Um, when you put the, every piece of equipment that you put on your gear or on yourself is going to make it harder for you to move around, to run around, stuff like that. Also, if you find yourself of, I want to be able to spread to a location, using a lighter belt will also help you do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you guys who want to be like super operator, high speed, you know, super fast – run a chest rig and that is it and you will you'll be able to achieve what you want to achieve that's just advice um you know take it as you will some people i see loading up with huge amounts of like like battle belts are not very good for running in my opinion they're good for other things but they're not good for running as well it's no one of the mm -mm. They're, they're, so. they become a hula hoop when you're running <laughs> hitting this thing behind me i don't know why i put that up here but Anyway, um, that's pretty much it that I have for talking about belts. I don't know how long yeah. you've been talking, um, but we, we, uh, I think this is a this is a good episode. Thanks for uh, thanks for that last piece of advice too. I think we need to be more people need to be more honest with themselves when it comes to do you want do you want to look the part or do you do you want to be able to play longer? And if you can I do mean, both, that's great. And if if not, then you know then be be a little bit more realistic. I don't know. I mean, I went from I went from running a plate carrier at Broken Home Three with real plates in it mm -hmm. in Memorial Day weekend in Oklahoma, and sucking like that just sucked. <laughs> running, mm -hmm. running weight. They weren't real plates. They were trainer plates. They were eight pounds each, and it was just like, wow, that, I was able to do it, but man, I got tired. Right. You know, and that was when I was in better shape, um, not great shape, but I was in better shape than I am now. Well, we're all um, kind yeah. of in piss poor shape right now after being. Stuck oh yeah, no, certainly. Yeah, this, this 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 at home thing. I mean, like I go hiking a little bit during the week if I can, but it's it's really difficult, especially with how hot it is now. Yeah. So, um, but but yeah, no, that is that is one of the the things to keep in mind is if you are struggling, there's a certain point where my form is going to become more important than than or sorry, the functions can be more important than the form. Mm -hmm. So I've been using a lot more chest tricks in airsoft games. I've been ditching the plate carriers. I don't, you know, that's just my own personal preference. I know there's some people who want to look super operator cool, but you know, and looking cool is cool. Like there's nothing wrong with it. Like, I just it look looks cool. dope. Yeah. Yeah, do, yeah. Like seriously, or there are those crazy people out there who want to train like they fight and they're going to, you know, run their, their uh, real sappies inside their plate carrier and run around. And that's cool. More power to you. Like that's awesome exercise. Like please I continue to train like you fight. I mean, Hey, I did that in Oklahoma and it sucked. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I will never do that again. Plus TSA doesn't like it when you bring armor plates on the plane. Even oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know when they say. I fake. remember. I remember that flight. The guy was like, "What are these?" And you're like, "Trainer plates." And all that guy heard was plates. He didn't yeah, he hear said, anything else. Well, I mean, they they're tra like I could pull they, them out of you my closet. Said trainer, they, you could have said trainer bookending plates, and all that guy heard was plates. I'm taking them. Oh, yeah. he did. They're expensive. They're from a company called Warrior Trail. This is this was before uh, this was before uh, lightweight polyurethane plates existed. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, realistically, those trainer plates, except for the hole, could probably be as durable as some of the UHMWP plates now. Uh, I wonder if they yeah, were, were they know. ballistic rated at all. I'm, I'm not. So, so Warrior Trail claims that they can take a 22 cal 
But here's what I'll show you. I'll, I'll grab them. They're right Interesting. Here. They have this hole in them. So they're obviously, like, the hole is designed so you know they're not actually ballistic. Um, they say non-ballistic. <laughs> God, it says uh, train like you fight on it. Uh. <laughs> yeah, triggered. I bought these. I bought these in, when was Broken Home 3? It was four years ago, I think. Oh, that was way more than four years ago. Four or five years ago? I don't know. Five years ago, maybe. Something like that. Mm -hmm. I bought them six years ago, something around there. I thought it was a great idea at the time. Um, you know, they, they're they nice. Like, the cool thing, the reason I kept these, the reason I'm going to continue to keep, this is eight pounds in my hand. I have another one over here. I put these two in a backpack. That is, like, way better than throwing bricks in a backpack. Oh, for, sure. For weight, for weight hiking, for, you know, for hike training. Um that's what's really cool is that's why I keep these is there. You just throw them in a backpack and you could do some hiking with it to train for, uh, for backpacking. I yeah. It won't know. ruin your bag that you put it in either. Yeah. So, but. so, um, you know, a lot of companies are doing that now. I think like LBX or LBT made like a plate carrier with weights on it or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is, I'm basically the same concept. It's just, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I would never wear these in a game an airsoft game ever again ever ever again all right well guys thanks for tuning into this episode of the not so round table george and i hope that you learned something about war belts and battle belts and belts of all kinds uh hopefully you were able to get a little bit more information about what kind of pouches and holsters that you might be interested in running if you guys have any questions uh or you want to continue the conversation about holsters and war belts and battle belts please hit up the comments section below with we do that, read them, though, and we do reply to them. We do, and uh, I think we'll get into our June prompt. So, uh, the June prompt is how to set up your airsoft guns and gear for traveling. There are a decent amount of uh, airsofters that play in other states uh, and travel around to games, so we want to know how you guys set up your airsoft guns and gear specifically um, to make it easier for you to travel. What considerations do you make when you are traveling? Is there anything you leave at home? Is there anything that you have to take with you? What kind of um, transportation uh, devices yeah. do you use? Answer all those questions in the comments section down below. If you have any questions for us, make sure you put those in there too, and we'll address them in our June episode of the Not So Round Table, which I think- Yeah, one thing I'm very curious of is, um, you know, what people do when they're traveling for air travel and what their people do when they're traveling for ground travel. Um, I'm very interested if it's people who are like, oh, it's the same either way or if it's different. I'd really like to know that in the comments. I'm just very curious. Yeah. So um, we'll see you next month, probably from the same locations that we're in now, uh, but we shall see. And uh, as always, stay healthy, stay safe. Wear a face mask, wear a mask, you know? Yeah, not just things. an airsoft mask, something that I just yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. A yeah. mesh be mask be isn't gonna do it. And uh, hopefully we will have some good news next month to talk about in terms of airsoft, you know, maybe uh, things will start getting back to a resemblance of normal. See you guys in 30 days. Bye. Well, it's actually like uh, more than 30 days, it's 30. You know, May is 31 days. So is it 31? We'll see you in 31 yeah. days. We'll see you in 30, 31 or two days. <laughs> <laughs> All right.